We're testing out the new camera today. This is really exciting. I can see myself for once. Very thrilled about that. I'm just gonna be looking up the whole time. This is really cool. I like this a lot. We're here for my, what month is it? June wrap up. <laughs> here is my little booklet. This side right here. This doesn't matter. You don't need to see that. I read 16 books in the month of June. I'm very pleased with myself. The theme was pink and green and I had a lot of fun with it. It was very fun. I even had like a page tracker for a little bit right there for the readathon that never happened and it was all very fun. I had a good Good month. If I could read 16 books like every month, I think I would get through my TBR in no time, even though I have hundreds of books in my TBR. And that's just why I own stuff that I don't own that I want to read is in the thousands, but that's okay. We'll get through the books eventually. So let's get started. So the first book I read this month, I was audio and reading at the same time. I actually had to go purchase it that, so that I could read it. It is The Tropic of Serpents, a memoir by Lady Trent by Mary Brennan. I gave this one four stars. This is the second book after A Natural History of Dragons. They all say A Memoir by Lady Trent, which I did not realize at first, but the covers are really pretty. Like whoever made these, like shout out to you. Thank you for that. I very much appreciate these. I have a feeling that this is going to be my favorite book in the entire series. In this one, Lady Trent, or I think her name is Isabel, she recounts the time that she went to go study the serpents in this one land and there's all this stuff. Oh my gosh, she like flies at some point and it's all very fun and there are still like lovely pictures because she is an artist. And I literally like love everything about this. I love this world. I love that she's studying dragons. I love that she's basically like, screw you to everybody who says that she's a lady and she can't study dragons because everywhere that she goes she meets different kinds of people who do different things and in here I very much appreciate all the people that live in the swamp. I think they're fantastic and this was amazing. The next book I read is The Lantern's Ember by Colleen Newick and she is one of my favorite authors. I had the Tiger's Curse series in my little box before I switched it out and it was my favorite series for the longest time and I was very excited and I bought this like the day it came out. I was thrilled, very excited for her next book and that it was a standalone and I ended up giving it four stars and here is why. So in here there is the lantern and the main character named Ember. So the lantern's name is Jack and then Ember is a witch. Lantern holds the gate, he watches the gate between the two worlds and he doesn't let people in and the witch is kind of in danger because the dude who rules that other land that's not ours is trying to kill witches and stuff. Or he, I don't, they don't really know what he does to witches but that's, um, that's not important. So Jack wants to make sure Ember is safe and he doesn't tell anybody that there's a witch even though he's supposed to and he just lets her grow up on her own and then she wants to go to that world and Jack is like no, that's a bad idea. You should not go to that world. And she's like, I'm gonna go to that world. And she meets a vampire who takes her there. And the vampire ends up being part of this love triangle with them. And I didn't, like, I understand why it was done. But if I think she would have written this into two or three books instead of one, she could have done a lot better. This had so much potential and I loved every aspect of it, but it was poorly executed. And that's why I only got four stars. Otherwise, if it was executed more like her other two series that she has that I absolutely adore, this could have been way better. It was such a great idea, but as a standalone, there wasn't enough room for growth. I just... I don't get it, but I did appreciate the ideas and I still did like it a lot. The next book I read is Smoke and Mirrors, uh, Short Fictions and Illusions by Neil Gaiman. This is following my Neil Gaiman little thing that I have going on right now. Um, I listened to the audiobook of this on a road trip and I literally like put sticky notes where my favorite stories were. Um, these ones are actually by Neil Gaiman. I have written a his Unnatural Creatures collection that he compiled from other people, other authors that he really likes and this one was ones he actually has written over the years and I did like that in the beginning there was like a little introduction and he was like this is why I wrote this one, this is where I wrote this one, this is where this one was, this one was there, like all that kind of stuff and some of them were like really good so like I'll tell you which ones like were my favorite and then we can move on but I liked Ooh, this one stuck together. I liked the price. That one was a bit long. I liked 
troll bridge that one was fun very weird queen of knives this one is told in like poetry verse i liked beowulf mostly for his explanation as to why he wrote it we can get them for you wholesale this one was like wild i don't know what provoked it but it was like really fun uh, the sweeper of dreams murder mysteries it's a lot more effort than i thought it was when i came up with this idea and snow glass apples which i do remember was like a snow uh snow white retelling which was really creepy and i tried to explain it to people and they were like okay but definitely like this i gave it four stars it was nice continuing on that Neil Gaiman thing that I'm on. Don't know what's happening, but I like it. The next book I read was a reread for me, and it is Of Poseidon by Anna Banks. I am rereading a couple series that I really enjoy that are like my guilty pleasures, and this was one of them. And this is the first book, and it follows Emma and Galen. Emma meets Galen, and he's like, you're not human, are you? Because he's not. But the thing is that Emma doesn't know that she's not human, and they are what is called Serena, which is like a mermaid, but her maid is offensive and I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this as much as I did this is one of the books that really really got me into reading and my like adult life I was afraid that I wasn't gonna like it and I was just gonna hate it and we were gonna have a huge issue and I still gave it five stars because I still love it very much so and I appreciate it and I'm so pleased that I still love it the next book I also gave five stars and it is Muse of Nightmares by Lonnie Taylor this one I liked way more than Strange the Dreamer because there was action and stuff happening and people growing throughout the entire book whereas strange the dreamer was like right at the end i was like oh my god this is amazing this one was amazing the whole way through this one continues on with laszlo and sarai and everybody else who is part of the city of weep how they unfold on saving weep and figuring out what laszlo is and how they came to be where they are there are some things that they learn in here that are insane. Plus, there's a new character. I cannot remember her name. The new character in here is literally amazing and I love her. And her sister was one of the original on the Citadel that were murdered. And she's trying to look for her sister who was murdered, but she doesn't know that. And it's, oh, so good. The next book I read is We Are Okay by Nina Liqueur. I took no time at all reading this and I thought I was going to be sad and it was going to make me cry and then it didn't. I don't know why but it's doing dealing with this girl who her name is Marin. She has lost her grandfather and before he kind of passed or like after he passed she learned like something about him that she's like I can never forgive him for and she's kind of dealing with her life changing around and she just wants to leave everything behind and forget about it but her best friend doesn't want her to and she's come back during Christmas break where Marin is the only one staying at her uh, university campus to help her change her mind and to come back home just for the holidays kind of thing and it's it's very deep and covers a lot of topics but I've never lost a grandparent I still have all four of mine currently and I just don't feel like I could really relate to it as much which is probably why I didn't be I wasn't as sad as maybe somebody else was and I don't mean to say that in a bad way it's just the truth I did like it I did give it four stars it just wasn't sad but I do understand running away and wanting to just forget everything the next book I read was Frostburned by Patricia Briggs I'm continuing on as always with my Mercy Thompson. This one was really good. There was some weird stuff happening in this one and it all took place within like two days, which was wild, but I gave it five stars and this is like my ideal reading universe. Shifters, werewolves, fae, vampires, witches, everything you want is in this series, seriously. And finally some romance. The next book I read was The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. This was really good. I sped through this. I read this in a day when I read two other books as well and I gave it five stars and I don't exactly know how to tell you what it's about. It's not that it's confusing. It was not really confusing. It's just very difficult to describe because there's another world where some people are born with the ability to move energy and they like the world that they live in is like littered with earthquakes all the time and the people are constantly restarting and restarting their civilization and there's just like remnants of other civilizations that didn't make it and the current one 
thinks that these people who can move energy, their only use really is to lessen the earthquakes or the tremors that this island has because there are so, 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 so many. But they treat them as lesser people and if you were discovered to be one of them, you're pretty much like thrown on the curb. And it follows three women who are all like they're all three of them are these people and one is like a young girl who's just discovering her powers the next one is a lady who is on her path to do a big mission that she's been given with a very important guy that is in the middle of their society and they've kind of discovered a bunch of stuff along the way the last one is a woman who's one son, her son has been murdered and her daughter was kidnapped by her husband and she's going to go find them because she wants revenge, obviously. And that's, I think, all you need to know about this. I loved it a lot and I cannot wait to read the next one. The next book I read is Five Dark Fates by Kendar Blake. This was the first book in the series that I gave five stars. I still have not read the novella, The Queens of Fenburn, so I will get there. But if there were history books of Fenburn, I would want to read all of them. There's not a whole lot I can tell you about what's happening, but the three queens are figuring out how to save their island because there's something amiss. Missed? That's a joke if you've read it. <laughs> but the only thing I don't get is why it's called Five Dark Fates when there's like four people that are very important and I can't figure out who the fifth person is. That's that's like the only thing I have. I don't I don't know who it is. Because there's the three sisters, the queens, and then there's Jules. And then is the fifth person Daphne? Is it Ilian? I is it one of the boys? Because there's just a couple of those. Like, I don't know. It was still amazing and I gave it five stars and I cannot wait to read the novella, which is something I would never have thought myself saying because I don't like novellas, which is wild, but we're gonna have a good time. The next book I read is another Neil Gaiman and it is Anansi Boys. I gave this one, how much did I give it? Four stars. I gave it four stars. I wasn't sure where it was going from about the first half. I was like two brothers hanging out, get to know each other after their dad dies. They didn't know each other existed, their dad was a god, and then this stuff happened. They both found love in the end and I did really like both romances. I thought they were amazing. It was just very, very different. And I, like, like, I don't have anything else to, I don't have to, to describe this. I read American Gods first, which I think really helped, and then I read this one, which was nice. And I did like the narrator. Narrators? I think it was a cast. Very, very strange, but I liked it. I did. The next book I read, finally, is God's Grave by J. Kristoff. Started this like a year ago, and I knew I wanted to read it. When I read Nevernight, which is the first book in this trilogy, I took like a year to read it, except I like would re read a couple chapters every week. Whereas this one, I read like the first chapter, and I started it, and then I put it down for like a year. And I finally picked it up and read the whole thing. And let me tell you, this is 10 times better than the first one. And I'm pretty sure I gave the first one five stars. I also gave this one five stars. In this one, Mia has developed a plan to get revenge on everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean everybody. And the way she does that, I love Mia. And I'm gonna read the next one and I'm probably gonna end up crying, but I love this. I also do appreciate that I'm getting more into adult novels. I am very proud of myself for that. I never thought I would get out of YA, so like, shout out to me. As I say that, like, the rest of these are all YA. The next book, I think was my favorite like favorite read this entire month one of my favorite reads this year I have told so many people about it I was like please read this series it's the second book and it is The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson I literally I gave it five stars obviously if I could give it more than five I would have okay so I don't normally like mysteries but I like the game Clue which is confusing but I just think I don't like adult mystery and this this was I love Truly Devious, which is the first one, and this one I just, I don't even know what to tell you. In this one, Stevie is still trying to solve the mystery that happened in Ellingham. She is trying to solve the murder there, and then also the murder from the first book. And she meets a lady who is researching Truly Devious as like her career, and she's written a book, and obviously Stevie has read that book, she's writing another book, and Stevie and her kind of clash a bit but like Stevie's like I want to help you write this I want to help you with your research and stuff and the stuff that she discovers Stevie is very smart 
and I love the flashbacks back to the 1920s when the murders actually happened and I love everything. So many things were revealed and found out in this and now there's more mysteries and I need the next book immediately. The paperback doesn't come out to October but I will probably listen to the audiobook before that and they announced a fourth book in the series and I'm just <sighs> dying on the inside like I need to continue. The next book I read was a completion of a trilogy and I am very proud of myself for doing that because I have a habit of not completing trilogies for some weird reason. I only read the first one, then the second one, and then I get stuck. But it's Ozland by Wendy Spinelli. This one was a continuation on. First was Everland, and then Umberland came second. And Everland was Peter Pan. And Umberland was Alice in Wonderland. And this one was Wizard of Oz, but there was also aspects of Red Riding Hood in here. And I don't know what happened, but it feels like all of her energy peaked in the second book and then it kind of came down in this third book. She had great ideas and stuff, but it wasn't at the same level as the other two. So I only gave it four stars, whereas I gave the other ones five stars. I feel like I'm becoming more critical the more I read, but that's okay. That's supposed to happen. I don't know. Like, I still love it and I like the idea and I love everything that happened, but like this one just wasn't it for me, you know? I didn't hate it. I still liked it. But it only took me like an evening to read because I was like, oh, I need to finish this kind of thing, you know? And I don't want to feel that way when I read books, but I will keep it. That being said, the next book literally put me in a reading slump where I forced myself to get out of it. I was like, you cannot make this book be the end of you for June, which thankfully I didn't. But it is Damsel by Elena K. Arnold. I thought I was going to love this one so much and it disappointed me so much. I understand where she was going and I read online that there was a lot of triggers and I was ready for whatever was going to be thrown at me but I wasn't ready for like this because it wasn't very good. I gave it three stars to be polite. I probably should have given it two. It's probably like a 2.5 if half stars but I honestly might actually get rid of it which is wild for me because I don't normally get rid of books but I might. I might get rid of it. The next book I read is a graphic novel and I'm very proud of myself for that. There was a lot of accomplishments this month and it is Odyssey Volume 1 far Off to Far Ithaca. I've never read the original Odyssey which is fine. I know great gods and stuff but this was like an all-female version. Like there was two dudes in here because dudes don't exist. Even the gods were all female. Zeus was like a chubby lady and Hera had a beard. It was, it was weird. I didn't hate it. I gave it four stars. I just don't know if I'm going to continue because I had no idea what was happening the entire time. Which is normal with graphic novels. I literally have no idea what's happening the whole time even though they're literally playing out for me in pictures. But it was very strange. Instead of Odysseus, it had Odyssea. Odyssea? I don't know. Like, I'm going to find a picture. <laughs> I have to find this picture of Hera because it's like, made me laugh. Like, it took me a while to clue in that that was Zeus and Hera and like, okay, look at this. That's Hera. But she's a chick. Like, look at her. <sighs> I'll see if I can find Zeus for you. This is Zeus. This lady right here. And that's Hera. Zeus and Hera. Like, I don't understand what happened. I mean, I'm not mad. I just don't know what happened. And the 16th and final book I read, I gave four stars, and it is marked by PC Cast and Kristen Cast. Yeah. I have a lot to say about this one. It is a reread. This is actually the third time I've read this book. Um, I read it in high school originally and then I read it back when I was getting back into reading in my adult life and now I've read it again as my third time. Um, I don't remember my original rating. I might bump it down to a three star. I still love the world and the universe and I do appreciate the thought process I guess that went into this but Zoe is the worst main character ever. I don't get it. I don't get her. I have a lot more to say but I'm saving more of my review because I'm doing a reread video series and I will talk about this as well as some other ones and I know this is like my guilty pleasure pleasure like books but honestly until Stark shows up Zoe is the worst main character ever and that's it that's all I have to say this is gonna fall over so those are the books that I read in June very very happy because I finished a couple of series and stuff continued on with some other ones got some books that I've had for a really long time read finally read more Neil Gaiman which is wild all in all I call that a success a success very successful month we did good good job to me I don't know if I'll keep that in let me know what your favorite book that you read in June was mine was The Vanishing Stare I already said that 
and if you have read any of these like let me know what you think do we have different opinions i'd love to know and i hope you all have a great day goodbye